Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Today's video I want to talk about setting up your bend lines and accounting for materials thickness. In a previous video, in fact one of my very first YouTube videos on this project, I somewhat mistakenly reported that you do not have to pay attention to materials thickness when you're forming parts according to the drawings that Zenith provides. That is somewhat true in some cases, but not entirely true in others, and I'll get into that now. By the time I publish video, it's, this video, it's very likely that I will have taken the other video down because I don't want to leave bad information out there. This is kind of an updated version of that video, so you're not going to be losing anything without that other video still being on my channel. But I think it's important to correct myself uh, whenever I give anybody bad information. So let's get into it. This is the drawing for the elevator trim tab, and I'm about to actually make a new one of these. The one I originally made turned out perfectly, but it's been damaged, so I need to make a new one. One of the things I want to talk about here is when you're interpreting your drawings, Zenith doesn't always locate bend lines perfectly for you. They give you visual references for where bend lines might need to be on a part blank in the flat, you know, top view of it. Uh, but in this case, we look looking here at the elevator trim tab, there is no part blank uh, drawing. In, in this case, they've shown it to you already formed. And so you have to figure out, based on the way that you're going to bend this, what order you're going to bend these in and everything else and how your bending brake operates, what length you need to make the legs of these. And essentially that means where are you putting your bend lines and what is your developed length going to be. They don't give you a developed length for this part. They give you an overall width or length, um, but not a developed length that gives you what the second dimension is to then lay out your bend lines. And in this case, the elevator trim tab is 25 thousandths of an inch. So here, if you recall in a previous video, I used uh, several 20 millimeter wide strips, experimented with them to determine, you know, what the proper develop length would need to be and then where the bend lines go on that develop length. I didn't really have to pay attention much to the thickness of the material because of the way that I fabricated it and the way that I developed my bend pattern for my developed length. Now, on the similar part here, now we have the elevator trim, cha trim tab channel, which is what the trim tab mates up to with a piano hinge. Again, no developed length here either. They give you an overall width of the part, which is the 1165, and they give you the thickness, but they don't really tell you what the developed length is. So again, I made a part blank um, with a 20 millimeter wide test strip to determine my where the bend lines would go to give me um, this shaped part. And again, didn't really have to pay attention much to the thickness of the material because of the way that I fabricated it. However, we're going to move on to another drawing and I'm going to show you where materials thickness does indeed matter. Okay, so here we're taking a look at the wing structure. This is the rear channel and channel doublers for basically what makes up the rear spar of the wing, the main wing on the airplane. And on these parts they've given us a, a developed length. So the part flat developed length is 95 by 112 and when you bend it that gives you a channel, basically a C channel, that's 112 millimeters long. So on this drawing they've given us a developed length of 95. We have to figure out where we're going to bend this to give us the 20 millimeter wide flange. And you can see in this drawing, the 20 millimeters goes from the very edge of the part here all the way out to the outside edge of the radius, and that includes the material's thickness. And up here it's the same way. It goes from the edge of the part all the way out to the material's thickness. Now they don't show all the parts uh, like this in drawings. So when we talk about the material's thickness, the width of this flange, or where this bend is, includes the material, the thickness of the material along this part of the piece. And because this rear channel doubler is 25 thousandths thick, you essentially have roughly three quarters of a millimeter, almost three quarters of a millimeter, uh, to take into account to get 20 millimeters from here to here. If you just strike a bend line at 20 millimeters on this material, put it in the bending brake and then bend it up, depending on which side you bend it from, but let's assume you clamp down the 20 millimeter flange and bend the part up, you will end up with a flange that's 20 millimeters plus the thickness of the material. So determining where to lay these bend lines out, again depending on how you bend the part, 
is dependent upon the thickness of the material and which direction you're going to bend it. If you clamp this part under the bending in the bending brake and bend the flange up, then you need to account for how much that material is going to gain length as it goes around the bend nose and bends up. It's far easier, in my opinion, if you have a bending brake that's strong enough to do it, to start with your developed length of 95, clamp this at approximately 19 and a half ish millimeters, bend it up and do it for the same from the other side and it turns out perfectly. That's how I did these parts in my brake and they turned out great. I clamped this at approximately 19 and a half, 19 and three quarters almost millimeters, just, just on the larger side of 19 and a half millimeters. And then bent the part up and then flipped it around and did the same thing and I ended up with a 58 millimeter high part with 20 millimeter flanges on it and I did the same thing over here for the part that nests inside at 93 millimeters developed length. Again, no bend lines are displayed anywhere on this drawing because they're not showing it to us in flat form. But let's take a look at another drawing where that becomes important. All right, so here we're looking at the right armrest side. There's um, a right and a left, and they're different parts. You can't just make a mirror image of one and the other. They're actually different parts entirely, so you do have to make them as one-offs. But if we take a look at, well, there's a couple things I've noticed, and I have not been in touch with Zenith about this, but I do notice that the overall part height from outer reference line to outer reference line on both the top and the bottom are different. And um, with my albeit limited knowledge of blueprint reading, those should probably be the same dimensions because everything's done at right angles. All the coordinate measurements are done at right angles. And so the overall height from here to this measurement line here should be identical from here to here, except they're not. I think they're off by a couple of millimeters. So that'll be interesting to see what happens when I build the plane. <laughs> but. Uh, it took me several tries to get this part right, and I'll tell you where I got confused. When it came to this part, I was using the bend lines that they've provided here as measurement lines. Okay, so what I mean by that is this flange, which, which is right here when it's bent, this flange uh, shows here that they want it 26 millimeters wide. The bend line that they've included is right along the same hash mark as where the 26 millimeter reference line is. Now, the measurements are 26 millimeters after the part gets bent, and so my opinion that should be over here, because what I first did was I measured 26 millimeters for this bend line and then bent it along 26 millimeters, and that was wrong. And then the other thing I did was if you look at the top bend line for this 20 millimeter flange up here, you can see that from here to here, although that's not a right angle, uh, this is not a right angle here, but from here to here is 26 millimeters. And so what I did was I, I used this corner here to draw a bend line parallel to uh, this surface. And that takes the bend mark right down to the point there, right to the corner, as if I was making a box. If you look over here on the forward and outboard uh, view, that does not come to a point down here. There's no seam right here between this flange and this flange after they're bent. And it took me a while to realize, and I don't know why it took me a while, but it took me a while to realize that all the bend lines that Zenith is putting in here, unless they are specifically located by coordinate, are simply just visual references to tell you approximately that there's a bend line in there. And then the measurement is what's the important part. So while it looks like this bend line here is located 26 millimeters from the edge of the part here, it is not in fact located in that spot. If you bend it like that, you will get this part wrong. And furthermore, you only need a 20 millimeter flange here. If you were to bend it from this coordinate being parallel to this line, or the bend line being parallel to the outboard uh, edge here, based off of this coordinate, you end up with almost a 28 millimeter uh, flange and that comes to a point and makes a corner with this flange over here. And so for a lot, numerous other parts, you don't even really have to think about it because you're just trying to accomplish bending a channel or bending up a, uh, a section of material where you just kind of get used to bending on your own brake and laying out your bend lines to achieve a certain flange width. But on a part like this, where you've got, we're almost building it like a box, you can really run into trouble if you make things like that 
and are using these bend lines for measurement locations and things like that. So try to keep that in mind. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well and I apologize, it may be kind of confusing, but from what I've seen, I've gone back and looked through all of the parts uh, and drawings. Most of your bend lines are strictly just simply there for visual reference. So for example, on this side of the part here where we want to make a 20 millimeter flange, this particular material is, is, is uh, 32 thousandths thick, so basically three quarters of a millimeter. So if we look at this section here, and we want to bend a 20 millimeter flange, because of the way this is bent, I'm probably going to put the flange in the brake and bend the part up. In order to accomplish that, I'm going to clamp 19 and a quarter millimeters under the brake, so I'm going, to, I'm going to put my bend line at 19 and a quarter millimeters, and then I'm going to bend the part up. When the part bends up, I'm going to get the 19 and a quarter millimeters plus the three quarter millimeter thickness of this edge to give me my 20 millimeters. Now if we compare that over here, to the seat pan, here we've got notches cut in the seat pan, 20 millimeters. Here's 22 millimeters over here, but these lines are all on, this, this bend line is all on the same line. So if you look at this bend line right here, this little notch here is 20 by 21. The bend line starts at the point right where the notch is and then goes all the way across over to this point here where this notch is. This notch is at 65 and 22. Well, on this side, the notch is only 20 millimeters deep, but on this side, the notch is 22 millimeters deep, but yet it shows a straight bend line all the way across. Why is that? Because that's not where the bend line goes. Again, that's just there for visual reference. You don't want to actually bend it right on that line. It's just there to show you that there is a bend in here somewhere. Where you locate that bend line is based off of how thick did you need that flange. Again, if we were going to clamp the flange and the bending brake, and ultimately you'll end up having to do that, at least from a few sides. If you're going to clamp the flange and the bending brake, the seat base is 32 thousandths, just like the seat uh, or the armrest is. So you're going to put your bend line at approximately 19 and a quarter millimeters from this edge to this edge. 19 and a quarter millimeters in, put it in the bending brake, clamp that 19 and a quarter down, and then bend your 20 millimeter flange. You're going to bend the part up. Your 19 and a quarter millimeters plus your 3 quarter millimeter is going to give you 20 from top to bottom. And you'll notice this is just a single line, unlike the rear uh, wing channels that we looked at where they actually showed the outline of the part where they actually drew in the thickness of the material. This is just a single line. <clears throat> There's no thickness depicted in this, in this drawing here. But remember how you measure your references. It's from the outside of the edge all the way to the outside of the edge, including the material's thickness. So that's how we end up with a 20 millimeter flange. If you were to clamp the flange in the brake and bend the part up, you would need 19 and a quarter millimeters for the bend line. And then you're going to gain that extra three quarters of a millimeter in the material's thickness to give you the 20. So I hope this all makes sense because this has bitten me a few times when I've tried to make especially some of these complicated parts. And I'm going to show you a final area where I had problems with this as well. Okay, so here's the mixer bearing support and I showed, a, I demonstrated in a video how I actually fabricated this part, but what I didn't talk about is locating the bend lines. If you'll notice, these are penciled in numbers here from my own handwriting. These bend lines are just drawn in here to, to visually show you that there's a bend line, but there's no measurements locating where they are. You know down here to, sh to see the formed part that you need your flanges to be a certain length, you need your hat section to be a certain height on either side, and then you need a certain width. But this doesn't tell you anything about where to put the bed lines. This is very similar to the elevator trim tab, where they don't even show you the part flat, and uh, you just have to figure that out on your own. Well here, basically they give you a developed length of 150, and then a height of 110, but this, this part, this view of the drawing essentially is just to show you where the mixer bearing hole goes for your, um, your mixer control tube. And so here you've got a 63 thousandths inch thick part, which is essentially a mil and a half. And you have to determine where these bend lines need to go. Again, we don't have 
a part drawn here. It's just a single line depicting the shape of this part, but it doesn't have that thickness where you can actually see it as having some dimension to it like you can with the um, rear wing channels. And so it's up to you to figure out how does your bending brake function? What order are you going to bend these in? What directions are going to gain height or, or stay the same depending on how you bend them? And then you have to locate your bend lines. And I would highly recommend that you make a test pattern for this piece. I was comfortable enough by the time that I made this part that I really didn't need to do a test pattern. However, when I went to make the second one, I had forgotten because I didn't write these numbers down. I had forgotten where I had put my bend lines. And so the second one didn't come out completely identical to the first one. And uh, I'm not going to go through and rebuild it because I'm certain that it'll work. But... <laughs> It's definitely, uh, you know, I make a lot of reference notations and marks on these um, blueprints drawings for my own benefit in case I have to go back and make a part over again. So that's why these are now written in there as if I have to go back and do it again. But I also have to remember how I actually built the thing <laughs> because it makes a difference what side you bend from and what method you use to bend. But at any rate, I hope that uh, explains a little bit about materials thickness and locating bend lines. The overwhelming thing I want to point out is um, unless you're certain that a particular part drawing has its bend lines located by measurement, odds are very good that your, measure, your bend lines are simply there for a visual reference and have nothing to do with where they actually needed to be precisely located, as is the case with this drawing and many others. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out where to put your bend lines. At any rate, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about this, um, I know this was a difficult uh, explanation to kind of follow along with, and I'm sorry I wasn't better at explaining it, but if you have questions later on, please let me know, and I'll try to explain further in the comments or even make a follow-up video if necessary, but we'll see you next time. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.